Good afternoon. My name is Justin. Welcome to my channel. I play guitar on songs in Nashville, and uh, this is a bit of a different different setting than I'm used to uh, filming in. This is my kitchen. <laughs> I'm actually uh, needing all this counter space, uh, so I'm at the kitchen island, and I built this kitchen island, and somehow it came out okay. So um, I just wanted to talk about all the things that I have found are fairly essential for me to have at every session, every gig, every rehearsal, just anywhere I go where I'm paid to play guitar, I'm gonna have this extra stuff with me. It has bailed me out multiple times. And I think every player that I know in town has some version of this kit of their own. A lot of guys use backpacks. A lot of guys use tool bags too. And then there are um, a couple of actual guitar accessories packs, you know, that have all these zippered pouches and they're pedal sized and everything. And they're really nice, but I think there's only one company that makes them. And I'll, I'll link that in the description as I will all the rest of this stuff. Let's dive into it. Uh, also, before we dive in, if you haven't subscribed, you should. I offer what I think is fairly valuable content. I don't know. The people who subscribe seem to think so, so try it out. Moving on. This is the backpack I use. This is a 511 Rush bag. You're probably thinking it looks really military or tactical or whatever, um, like it's full of grenades or something. What I like about it is that it's ultra heavy duty and it has a ton of pockets and a ton of space. I can just keep adding and adding and adding stuff. And if I, if I loosen these straps on the side, it just grows. It's like Mary Poppins bag. Like I feel like I could pull an entire coat rack out of it, you know? I guess I'll, I guess I'll go in order of the things that I use um, most often on a session, what I typically pull out first. So first thing I, I generally pull out of my backpack is my cans. And I use GK Ultra Phones. You may recognize these these earmuffs, they're, they're basically safety earmuffs made by Peltor. You can find these at Home Depot that don't have any headphones, you know, in them. They're extremely, extremely good at isolating. I can sit next to a drummer and I don't have to change my mix when he starts playing. You know, on a session, everybody's got their own little uh, mixer, right? And the channels are labeled. There's click, bass, acoustic one and two, electric one and two, loop if we're running a loop or, or any sort of production that's already done on the track that we're playing along to. Uh, vocalist, keys, there's a mix knob and a master knob. Well, what these allow me to do is listen extremely quietly, which is very important to me. They, they allow me to listen really quietly while there's a loud drummer right beside me, you know? Some of the tracking rooms that I play in are painfully loud. Like when I walk in and I'm carrying my guitars to sit down at my rig, if the drummer's playing and he's cracking the snare, there's a couple rooms in town where it's just, it is painful. It's like a laser beam. <laughs> Sometimes I'll, I'll put these in before I walk through the door. Cause I know that he's getting sounds, you know, he doesn't want to stop and wait for me to put my cans on, even though it's it's pain, painful. Some guys do. Some guys they'll stop and they'll say, "Hey, you're gonna you're gonna get cans on, or you're just moving through," and they'll get right back to it. You know, I like these. I I don't want to be one of the thousands and thousands of musicians who go to bed at night and just hear like a, Doo! <laughs> you know, like just this ringing that never stops. I hear so many horror stories about that and I really don't want to be that person. So if you're familiar with the studios in Nashville, if you've tracked at Ocean Way, they're mixers. They have sort of these tongue in cheek descriptors for the levels of the master fader. I'm at Why Bother on the fader. That's where I like to listen. So if that helps anybody understand. I thought it was pretty funny. So moving on, uh, next thing. Generally, I have this pack sitting on the floor right next to my chair. And it stands up on its own because I have so much stuff in it. And then these two little pockets are what I get into most frequently. First, because I have my favorite slide. I just like really thick walled glass. This is a Pyrex slide. It's a, uh, it's a Planet Waves thick walled Pyrex. And it's long too. And I, I'm not ever like playing all six strings. You almost can't on a radius guitar, you know. It's not about that for me. It's about the sustain that all the extra mass gives you, right? This is a really clear, sweet sounding slide. Um, it doesn't have a lot of excess noise. Sometimes I want that, most of the time I don't. 
Um, but because, because it's longer and because the walls are, are thicker, and I think this is a large size actually, it just sustains really nicely. It's really clear and sweet. Favorite slide. I also keep in the same pocket my favorite capo. This is a G7 capo. What I like about it is that wherever I set the tension, it stays there. And it's not one of those quick change clamp style capos that sort of pulls off to the side a little bit as it clamps down. I don't like that. So <clears throat> these are expensive, but they're worth it. I've got like, I think I have three of them in various places so that I'm never not, that I'm, so I'm never without one. You know, you might think it's weird that a full-time session player would use capos, but uh, it's pretty rare, to be honest. And then also, sometimes you've worked out all your parts in, say, the key of G, and you're using open strings, and you're playing higher on the neck, and the singer says, you know, I want to go to A flat. Well, you're not just going to move to bar chords, you know? You're going to try to keep the same parts and the same voicings that you've come up with. And so I'll throw a capo on the first fret. Um, usually I retune the guitar. Even for the key of F, I'll retune my guitar. I don't tune up a half step. I tune down a whole step and play in G. And that's the key of F. And it sounds really cool. You just got to be real delicate in both hands. So next thing, Belmont household nail box. It's basically an Altoids can. You know, that's how I use it. Lots of guitar players have Altoids cans. This is just full of Full of picks. Um, I am mostly a medium pick guy. I like 0.73. I like celluloid on acoustic. I like uh, Tortex or Cortex or Oltex. Uh, there's so many texts. Um, the kind of uh, rough, slight, just very slightly rougher material for electrics. So most, mostly, almost 99.99% of the time I'm, I'm playing a medium pick. Just a regular off the wall medium pick off the shelf. Next thing I, I use fairly often is a headstock tuner. You might be wondering, why do I have a headstock tuner if I'm playing electric and I have a tuner on my pedal board? Well, if you've been watching the channel for very long, you know that I really enjoy unplugging from the pedal board altogether and going straight into my amp. Oh, I've got an extra battery here because my favorite headstock tuner um, tends to go through batteries pretty quickly. So I'll tune my guitar on the pedal board, then I'll unplug from the pedal board and plug straight into the amp. And I just, for, for like unaffected, dry rhythm guitar sounds, you cannot beat it. You absolutely can't beat it. But I still want to check my tuning between takes. So rather than unplug and plug back into the board and unplug and just keep doing this thing over and over again, I will put a headstock tuner on my electric and I will roll the volume knob down and check my tuning with a headstock tuner. I have a love-hate relationship with headstock tuners, and basically I love this one and I hate all others. <laughs> uh, this is the Polytune from TC Electronic. There will be a link in the description. What I like about it is that it's accurate, and it can actually hear all my strings. I find that headstock tuners on the cheaper end, when you put them on an electric, sometimes they just can't hear the low E string very well, or something like that. I'm sure there are other tuners that, that do as good a job as this, or better, you know, but I'm really happy with this one. So, next time you're on a session, maybe you should try unplugging from your pedal board and dialing in a sound with your amp, and then using a headstock tuner to check your tuning. Works really well for me. The rest of this stuff, there's gonna be some things here that you're kinda of like, wow, I wouldn't have thought of that. Let's go through all of it. <laughs> so next, this is very important to me, water. This is a 64 ounce Hydro Flask, that's half a gallon. That'll generally get me through a day. I'm a water snob. I drink my own water from my house. <laughs> My wife and I overpaid for a water softener system, a whole house water softener system. It actually came with a second layer of filtering in the kitchen. So if I get water out of the fridge or out of the second faucet in my sink, it's, it's double filtered. And for some reason, it just tastes really good. Like softened water that has a lot of the impurities out just tastes great. What's gross to me is like the little plastic water bottles that are so noisy because they're the thinnest material they could possibly be without, you know, falling apart in your hand. The ones that where you un unscrew the lid, um, you kind of, if you're not really careful with the pressure you're holding the water bottle with, it'll spread, you know, it'll leak out as you, as you unscrew the lid. That water just tastes nasty. I'm sorry. I just imagine those bottles sitting in some 
150 degree ware warehouse somewhere just leaching chemicals into the water. <laughs> Maybe I'm a bit paranoid, but I, my water tastes great. So I take this with me. It keeps me from snacking all day. I find that when I think I'm hungry, my body's really telling me that I need a drink of water. And so that helps a lot. Moving on. I have this uh, string changing kit. This is just in a zippered Amazon Basics box. And I keep tens with me, Diodario NYXLs. Uh, I keep 11s with me. I keep 10.5s. And then if I haven't changed um, a baritone in a while, I'll keep baritone strings with me as well. And if I show up with some time um, at the beginning of a session, I will, I will change one of the guitar strings, like one of the ones I use a lot, or I know I'm going to use a lot that day. So uh, I keep this little string winder, and you know I use this little thing to crimp the excess off. And then I also have two other slides in here. They're both metal. Again, I prefer glass, generally, but sometimes I want all that excess rattle and noise around the note. Sometimes that's what I'm going for, and I will often just grab a brass slide. And uh, sometimes I do that as a pad in quieter parts of the song, or um, it's sort of a rock song, and I'm, maybe I have a fuzz pedal on, and I'm going for almost more of a lap steel vibe. I'll use a metal slide just for, the, just for all the extra stuff around the note, you know. And I keep two of them just, you know, I might go back and forth and see what I like, but this one I really like. It's uh it's pretty heavy. It's a little bit thicker. It's it's wider and I've got kind of fat fingers. And I it, it's very polished and smooth, so it doesn't quite have it's not as dirty as the brass slide. It's not as clean as the glass, but it's heavy, so it's got all that sustain that I like. So, sometimes I reach for that too. So that's my little uh, string change and extra slides kit. Um, I also keep a bunch of pedals with me that are not on my board. The one I use the most is probably this wah pedal. This is a Real McCoy 10. This is such a great sounding wah. If you've seen my two pedal board videos where I talk about the boards that I use on sessions, you know that on my big board, I use the Mobius um, filter machine to with an expression pedal and can get a wah pedal sound that way and then on my smaller board i use the line six it has several wah models that you know are trying to sound like an old vox or a crybaby or whatever and i use the expression pedal for that but this sounds so ridiculously great and <laughs> you know for the faster moving stuff i'll i'll just leave it in the bag and stick with uh my presets that i've come up with but um, I will use this quite often and it's not like I'm playing 70s funk parts and just like rocking the thing and going nuts on it the whole time. What I really like to do with a wah is just use it as an EQ pedal. I'll park it somewhere and it's got this really nice, it's almost like a parametric EQ where you have, you have the Q tightened, zeroed in on this really tight frequency. That pokes through the mix really nicely. It's not fighting anything else because it's such a narrow thing. And sometimes I'll, I'll have it heel down and I'll play a sort of pulsing delayed part and that'll act like a pad in the track. Sometimes I cock it halfway open and play a solo like that, you know? Just different things. There's so many, so many things you can do with a wah pedal besides playing the 70s funk stuff, right? So that's why I keep that. Lately, I've also been carrying the old King Tone 1968 around. This sounds really, really good, um, and it's a lot smaller than my Voodoo Vibe. I still absolutely treasure the Voodoo Vibe, but um, if I'm out with my smaller board, I will plug this in in front of it sometimes, and just, just I, I like to add really subtle, really subtle effects where you're kind of like, is that a tremolo? Is it a vibrato? Is it a chorus? Like it's so, it's so light. But when there's space in the mix for such a thing, I find that it, it works out really nicely. <clears throat> what other pedals do I have in here? Oh, <laughs> you know I'm not a compressor guy. Uh, I've talked about that a lot on this channel. I just don't like them. I just uh, I don't like being compressed. I try to play with a lot of dynamics, and I feel like when a compressor's on, I'm generally just fighting it 
I feel like it fights me the entire time. Personal preference, you know. But this one um, is the one I hate the least. <laughs> so I keep it with me. I don't know the last time I plugged it in. Uh, but every once in a while. <clears throat> Two other pedals. I've got the old Orion Stereo Chorus SCHZ. Um, there's a some some random guitar player from LA really likes this, you know, that Mike Landau guy. <laughs> I think it's really great too. It it's almost um, it's almost its own thing. Like it doesn't sound like a Leslie. It doesn't sound like a CE1. It doesn't sound like other choruses, you know. But it's got a little bit of all those things, and it's kind of its own thing. The bypass on this is so horrific uh, that I don't want to give it any permanent pedal board real estate. And you know, I like. My buddies at XTS could true bypass it or whatever, but I just, it's, it's one of those things I pull out every once in a while. Don't use it all the time. And then the last thing, just because I like it so much, is the King Tone Duelist. I keep this with me. I, I really like the um, Blues Breaker side of it, but it's a really versatile pedal. For having, for having a Blues Breaker and a Tube Screamer together and, and having the fat stock and glass switches, like they're just little EQ tweaks, I mean, it's... It's really great, and you know, that's not a secret. Everybody loves that pedal. <laughs> okay, what else do I have? We're getting to some of, the, some of the stranger things that you might not have thought would belong in a guitar accessory, accessories bag, an everyday carry bag, right? Um, <clears throat> well, patch cables to use all the things that I just showed you. I have another case. Uh, this, this was an in-ears case that I used when I was on tour, which was... 10 years ago, the last time, over 10 years ago. I have other picks in here. I've got banjo picks, thumb pick. I also have some tools, Allen wrench, and then I have a bunch of smaller, I guess I do carry an Altoids 10. It's a smalls 10. I have some really little tools in here that they're for adjusting like strat saddles and stuff like that. If for some reason it's, you know, cause I, I carry some of my favorite guitars in gig bags and gig bags can mess with your bridges, you know, just the nature of the beast. What else do I have in here? Oh, this is super important. RX bar, prescription bar is what I call it. Three egg whites, 14 peanuts, two dates, no BS. My favorite part about that is the no BS. I feel like, I feel like literally everything we eat has sugar added to it, and it's hard to not be a conspiracy theorist about that. And maybe it, maybe it's just that our palates demand it, we get addicted to it, and so we gravitate naturally towards things that are overly sweet, but it's obnoxious how much sugar's in everything. And I stopped eating food with added sugar like six years ago now. My wife and I did Whole30, which is a, a cleanse where you lay off of grains and food with added sugars and uh, like beans, bread, chips, sweets of all kinds, you know, and you're basically eating meat and nuts and some a very, very few other things, vegetables, stuff like that. It just changed everything for me. I tried eating a Klondike bar right after I finished Whole30 and I got a headache before I finished it. And I was kind of like, you know, we probably weren't meant to eat things that are nearly pure sugar. And so I've just been off of it. So the snacks that I carry, most, most studios, like they have granola bars and stuff covered in sugar, corn syrup, all sorts of other crap I can't pronounce. I'm just like, why? So I keep one with me, you know, at least one. Um, okay, I also have, also have some uh, exercise equipment. <laughs> this kind of gets pulled out on the drive in, right? When I'm, when I'm on my way, when I'm commuting to Music Row or to Berry Hill, I just want to have the blood flowing before I get there. So I use this. It's a Diodario branded, you know, you can do individual fingers. Um, it's a little grip, grip thing. And then this guy, this is actually pretty intense. This one's a uh, hundred pound resistance. So I will squeeze it quickly and release slowly. And I'll do that in both hands and I'll flip it over, you know, cause the, the, Majority of the pressure is on different fingers when you flip it over. And again, I'm just, you know, both hands while I'm driving, I'm just doing this without really thinking about it. I just want the blood flowing before I get there. So that's important for me, right? Like I depend on my hands uh, for income for my family. And so I just want to be proactive about taking care of myself. <sighs> what else do we have? Okay, this one's kind of weird. 
you might not have guessed this, I keep deodorant in my everyday carry bag for music. There's a couple studios in town that have older AC systems. It can get a little hot and swampy. You're in a room with often no windows and not, a, you know, you don't want loud vents blowing around when you're trying to mic up a drum kit or in the acoustic room. The, the studio might have proper cooling, but there's no vents in the acoustic room. And there's a couple places in town that like late July through early September can get pretty swampy. And you're sitting there like this, right? Like this armpit's just folded shut and everything's just, you know, fermenting. <laughs> So, man, I, I gotta be honest, there's a couple times when I have snuck this into my pocket and run to the bathroom, I will take my shirt off using hand soap and water over the sink. I'll kind of wash and then and dry myself off and then, you know, clean up whatever I dripped all over the sink, whatever water, and then I reapply. I just don't want to be the guy who um, everyone's kind of like, whoa, <laughs> you know, I feel like being a professional in any setting, you are trying, um, you want to make an effort to be hospitable toward people. Everything about you, whether it's the way you dress or the way you carry yourself, the way you smell, it's either welcoming or it is unwelcoming, I guess. I'm try I, I want to say offensive, but like not to that degree, something far less intense than offensive. So unwelcoming, right? You know, I, I walk a lot between sessions I'll go get lunch with everybody and then I'll, I'll walk around because I sit for a living, you know? So I wanna keep moving. And this time of year, from now until, like I said, early September, I can get pretty gross walking around Music Row over lunch, you know? So um, I just wanna make sure that, that I come back into the studio space and I'm still welcoming. So, deodorant. Uh, for the same reason, I'll, I'll keep a to toothbrush with me as well. And I don't think I have that in here right now, but same thing. If I, if I go out and eat wings and drink a beer over lunch, uh, I'm probably going to brush my teeth when I get back to the studio, you know? Okay, I keep a notepad with me. I have all these ideas that pop into my head, whether it's for YouTube videos or, oh, I'm out of, I'm out of tens buy strings, you know, or order, order strings or whatever. So I, I like writing it down. I don't like reaching for my phone for everything. A buddy of mine just recently got a light phone. It's a dumb phone like as opposed to your smartphone, you know? It does phone calls, text, and calendar, and that's it. That kind of sounds like freedom to me, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I can't do that because playing sessions in Nashville, you are, you are almost forced to use iMessage. I know I have friends who are big Android guys. I don't think any of them are left. I think they've all switched over. There are younger writers and producers that when they send out a group text, if it's not blue, they're like, oh, Who's the offender, you know? And I know a couple guys have said like, ah, I've been not called back because of the group text. <laughs> it's ridiculous, but um, it just shows you how integrated iMessage is into this line of work. If I have a producer who asks me to put a band together, I'm group texting those guys on iMessage. I can name the text. If it's a week away, I'll pin it to the top um, and I'll name the text like June 28th, Omni 2 p.m. And then everybody knows when I respond to remind them of that session, it pops up on their phone with the date and time. Oh yeah, I got a session tomorrow. Everybody does that. All the, we all, we all have clients that we lead for, right? That's, that's, part of the responsibilities of a session leader is to chart the songs, call the band. We often don't get to pick the players that we want. Um, and that's not to say that we're picking people we don't want, but uh, it's not like we have to find players. The producer or artist has one or two people that they want in each spot. And if too many of those people are booked on a date that you're trying to put the band together, we'll often move the date. All that to say, um, I'm stuck with an iPhone because of iMessage and because of how awesome it is for organizing my workflow and my calendar, you know? So <clears throat> I do try to get away from the phone and I like using a notepad. And since I have a notepad, I have things to write with on it. First, my favorite pen is a Pilot G2, the Fine Point the 07. It just feels really great. Secondly, um, I'm not only a water snob, I am a massive pencil snob. This pencil 
it's discontinued and you can't get it anymore. <laughs> it's a Palomino Blackwing. Uh, this is a limited edition, 33 and a third edition. You might recognize that number from the RPM of a vinyl record. And what I love about this, first of all, the Blackwing, pencil, Blackwing pencils, they write so dark, they're so soft and smooth, and it just looks and feels great. What is extra cool about the 33 and a third pencil is that it's got these little grooves down by the end to simulate the grooves of a vinyl record. Well, when the pencil's a little bit longer, it doesn't feel as balanced to me, and having this extra grip down here is so great. So I bought a box of these, and I started using them, and I was like, oh man, I need to get another box. Like, I can't run out of these for a long time. Went back to Palomino's website, sold out, discontinued, limited edition. So I definitely went on eBay and overpaid for another full box of these pencils. <laughs> I keep a long point sharpener with me. Don't knock it till you try it. That's all I'm saying. So I think, I think this is all, oh no, it's not. Last piece, a multi-tool. And this is a very special multi-tool to me. This is my grandpa's old Leatherman. Um, he's had this for years and years and years. I always like to have a multi-tool with me. Just a couple years ago, my grandpa, who's turning 84 next month, just a couple years ago, he was telling me about how he was on his roof. And before I could react, he said, wouldn't you believe it? I dropped my Leatherman and broke the knife blade, the, half the tip off of the knife blade. I was so mad. He's had this since, uh, I want to say the 90s. My, my reaction was, why are you on the roof? You're 80. Um, <laughs> I got on eBay and I found an old original. Leatherman with the same pouch and I gave it to him for his birthday, which was only a, a couple months away at the time So he opened it and he's like wow. Thank you. He goes I actually sent my other one back and they fixed it for free and sent it back to me and I was like Oh, well now you've got two, you know And so then that year for Christmas he gave me his old one So he carries the one that I gave him as a replacement and I carry the one that he's had for decades that's Super cool. So a little bit of sentimental value. Also, just extremely useful. I mean, even for cutting strings, just, I don't, I don't like to be anywhere without a little multi-tool. I'm not quite to the point where I'm going to wear it on my belt like a shop teacher <laughs> or something, you know. I got to keep appearances up. I'm a guitar player, right? So those are all my things. I basically don't go anywhere without all this stuff, you know, and I might not use all of it every time, especially the compressor. I like having all the things that I might need in whatever situation. What are you carrying? That's what I want to know. What do you think my kit is missing? Like I said, everybody in town who plays for a living carries something like this. I know guys who use like a Husky toolbox or a Carhartt, some of the, one of those open toolboxes with the big handle on the top. I know other guys who use backpacks or they'll have a, a smaller rolling um, set of drawers in a road case, you know, that goes next to their session rig, and they just pull out a drawer, and it's full of all this kind of stuff. So, that's my video. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments if you think I'm missing anything or what you like to carry to sessions for yourself. Oh, subscribe if you haven't. I would really appreciate it. Thanks a lot.